Hey everyone, coming to you from the home office to get you set for the Cowboys Sunday night showdown. So here are five things to watch in the Cowboys versus Steelers on Sunday night. And Cowboy fans, you can't help but not like the way this one sets up. And that brings me to my first thing to watch. And it's all these injury issues that will certainly have an impact. You've heard about Micah Parsons dealing with a high ankle sprain. Demarcus Lawrence has that Liz Frank foot injury. And receiver Brandon Cooks, he had to have arthroscopic surgery after an injection caused some infection in that knee. He also had a meniscus issue cleaned up. So let's start with the defense. And we all know what Micah Parsons brings. We all know what uh, Tank Lawrence brings to this defense. Without those stalwart defenders, and oh, by the way, don't forget that defensive back Deron Bland, he's still not back from injury. That defense will absolutely be compromised. And now it's up to Mike Zimmer to try and put together a scheme and play call to protect that defense and try and find some way to put some pressure on Justin Fields and that Steelers offense. And that brings me to my second thing to watch, and it's this. Mozzie Smith can't be a flash. Uh, against the Giants, it's the best we've seen him play by far in his second year with the Cowboys. In fact, it's nothing like we've ever seen. A lot of people were painting him out to potentially be a bust. And I was among them, but I will say against the Giants. And again, they're not some great run team, but he did what you have to do, especially in this Mike Zimmer uh, defense. He controlled the point of attack. He disrupted by moving the line of scrimmage back into the Giants' own backfield. And that sets things up for the way that Zimmer um, has constructed this defense for them to be at their best. 24 rushes in that game for the Giants, only 26 run yards. Cowboys will need more of the same from Mozzie Smith. And after that game, he said it himself. He doesn't want to be that, he didn't want that performance to be a flash in the pan. He's absolutely right. I agree. Do that. Live up to your word, and the Cowboys might have something going. But listen, don't forget, that was the quiz against the Giants. This will be a much different test. All right, the third thing to watch Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb go out there and earn your money. We all know they got the big paychecks. They look good against the Giants in that first half. But again, that Giants defense nowhere near as good as the Steelers defense that comes in ranked number four in the NFL. We saw Dak uh, be decisive and quick with his decision making, especially in the first half of that game when he and C.D. Lamb really got in sync. The Cowboys figured to have to have that for most of this game for them to have an opportunity. And while we're talking about that Cowboys uh, offense, one aside, because the last time that the Cowboys played in Pittsburgh, it was the rookie season for both Dak Prescott and, and Zeke Elliott. And I'll never forget that game because Zeke Elliott, he grabbed that screen pass, picked through defenders, read his blockers perfectly. He went 83 yards for a screen pass touchdown in that one. And then, of course, he closed the show with a 32-yard rushing touchdown with just seconds left in that game. And I just thought about the fact that that was eight years ago. That's like a lifetime in the NFL. On that day, Zeke accounted for 209 yards from scrimmage. So far in four games this season, he's only had 117 yards from scrimmage. That's just more than half in four times uh, the number of games. So, yeah, illustration of just how quick life goes in the NFL right there. The Cowboys need some echoes of vintage Zeke. I don't know if he's capable. And again, when they made the move to get him in the offseason, that's why I didn't like it because I just didn't know what he had left. And through four games, it certainly doesn't seem like much. All right, uh, next up in terms of what I'll be watching, that Cowboys offensive line against T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt is a bona fide game wrecker. He is one of the best. Um, he had 19 sacks last year. That was tops in the entire NFL. The Cowboys did a good job game planning Miles Garrett um, in that opener against the Browns, but this will be a little different test because Cameron Hayward is also a force on that Steelers defensive line. In fact, Hayward and Watt, are the only two NFL teammates that have both combined for at least 80 sacks in their career uh, individually. Uh, that's a hat tip to Ed Werder for that great nugget right there. So listen, there's going to be force from the outside. There's going to be force from Hayward. It'll be tough for that, that young Cowboys offensive line. Tyler Guyton probably won't be head up 
against T.J. Watt uh, much, but we know he struggled with some of the holding calls. That offensive line is taking strides in the right direction, but they will have to continue to do so in a big way to give Dak time uh, to, to fire on time and on target. Um, and then that brings me to my final and fifth thing to watch, and it's the fact that uh, Cowboys fans, you probably want this to be a field goal game. Um, when you think about how this game sets up and the fact that the Steelers are only a two and a half point favorite in this one, it's because, listen, they're not some scoring juggernaut. They're they're only scoring about 18.8 points per game, and that's in the bottom third of the NFL. So the Cowboys just have to try and whole serve, keep pace. The Cowboys are the best field goal, field goal scoring team in the NFL. The Steelers are second. So if this comes down to the field goal, and I bring this up seemingly every week, uh, Brandon Aubrey could be a plus in this one. Uh, he's had a fantastic start to the season. He's been the best kicker in the NFL so far. He nabbed NFC Special Teams Player of the Month. He nabbed that award this week, uh, most deservedly. He's got 12 field goals made, the most through four weeks of any NFL kicker, and that included the 65-yarder, which is the second longest in NFL history. So Cowboy fans, you got to hope this comes down to a field goal and you can perhaps win it on, on the fact that the Cowboys have a little bit of an edge in the field goal game, and they certainly have an edge when it comes to the strength of Brandon Aubrey's leg. All right, those are just some of my thoughts about the game. Um, I think the Cowboys can win this game. I just don't know if they can do it in the hostile territory that will be Pittsburgh on Sunday night. All right, folks, enjoy the game, and make sure you tune into Sports Special as soon as that game ends. We'll have a full wrap-up for you.